welcome to Kindful Living. My name is Zara and this is Zane. And for those of you who don't know, I am a mama to two boys under the age of two, as well as a child and family therapist. I make videos about how to live a kind and mindful life. Today's video is about sugar cleansing. And in particular, I'm going to share uh, the reason that led up to me wanting to start a sugar cleanse for 30 days, as well as um, how I'm going about this process. And then I'm going to share my one week update. So in case you're wondering why I'm filming on the bed today, it's because um, these little guys are sick and they're not feeling well. So we're all just cuddling and spending the day together. So about a month and a half ago, I was sitting down eating a piece of vegan cake after my kids had gone to sleep. And I was talking to my partner and we realized that we weren't really reaping the benefits um, or all the benefits, benefits, I should say, of living a vegan lifestyle. Because as much as we were eating healthy... Yes, baby? Do you want to say hi? As much as um, we were eating healthy, like 60, 70% of the time, the other 30% of the time was a total miss. We were eating highly processed foods with lots of added sugars, and it had gotten to the point where we both probably um, would have classified our need for sugar as a sugar addiction. So when the kids went to sleep after dinner, uh, we both felt like, you know, we needed to grab that piece of vegan cake or a vegan cookie or whatever the case may be. And I think it's easy to fool yourself into thinking that because it's vegan, it's healthy, but it's not. Um, so I guess that was the main realization that led to me beginning research. And so I, I met with a dietitian. I spoke to nat my naturopathic doctor. Come sit, here. Come sit here. Okay, so we'll bring Aya too. Um, so I spoke to my friends that had, Aya. say hi Ayan. I spoke to my friends who had tried uh, a sugar cleanse. I spoke to a dietitian, like I said, and my naturopathic doctor read lots of articles to try to understand um, what sugar detoxing was. <coughs> Bless you. And uh, so that led to us making a decision to do a 30 day sugar cleanse because for the sake of creating a new habit, it takes about... 31 days are you okay okay, okay. <laughs> um it takes about 21 days to create a new habit so we wanted to do it for at least 21 days but we also wanted to give ourselves a chance to not just detox but to then to slowly add in the sugars again um and to let our bodies create a new lifestyle so we knew that in order to do this it wouldn't just be a mindset shift it would really oh and there's Aini. everyone's on the bed uh, it would take a lifestyle switch. The way that we decided to do it was that we would do it for 30 days and uh, we would, for the first week, eliminate all sugars. And uh, that included added sugars as well as foods high in sugar. We were trying to keep it to five grams of sugar or less. And uh, the reason for this is because we felt like we did have a sugar addiction, like I said. So the body doesn't really know the difference between something sweet that's natural or something sweet that's synthetic. Although it processes these foods differently and metabolizes them differently, um, sweet is sweet. And when you eat something sweet, it usually tr triggers the need to want more sweet stuff. So we cut out sweet stuff uh, for the first week just to sort of retrain our taste buds uh, to not need sweet things. And then starting week two, our plan was to... Um, okay, baby? Nadia. Starting week two, our plan was to, uh, nana. yeah, you're going to go see your Nana today. Yay. Starting week two, our plan was to uh, add in some sugars, uh, Hi, some fruit, nana. but very small amounts. And then week three to go up to like 25 grams of sugar a day. And then week four, yeah, it's your brother Aya. I'm sorry, there's a lot of stopping and starting um, for today's video, but just bear with me. And so for the fourth week, our plan was to try to eat um, the way that we would want to eat with our new lifestyle. Trying to limit the amount of sugar, of course, because this is not something that we just wanted to do for a short period of time. It's something that we wanted, yes, baby? It's something that we want to be able to maintain, making wiser choices about what we're consuming. So, uh, you might be wondering, why did we decide this? So like I mentioned earlier in the video, we realized that we weren't really reaping the benefits of living a vegan lifestyle because we weren't eating as healthy as we could. Mind you, with two kids under the age of two, that's very difficult. And I think we do a lot better than most people without kids do. Um, but we really wanted to push ourselves a little bit further. So our main reason is because of health. We wanted to be good uh, role models of health for our boys. And we wanted to find that uh, unlimited fountain of energy uh, at the end of this challenge. 
Other reasons included wanting to curb our sweet tooth, uh, not feeling the need to constantly grab something sweet at the end of dinner, for example, um, and just wanting to uh, detox our bodies and have good overhaul health, more energy, more vitality. Uh, came across a few studies recently that said that sugar is one of the major causes of inflammation. And so I wondered about how that could lead to uh, different types of chronic illnesses um, and didn't want to find out the hard way so I thought might as well try to nip this problem in the bud before it gets worse. So with week uh, one underway of this cleanse I wanted to share my experiences and I guess I'll break it up into the highlights and the lowlights. Let's start with the highlights. Um, one of the things that I noticed right away is that my taste buds were a lot more sensitive. Uh, within like a day, I was able to taste things differently and it was a good difference. So I could uh, notice that when certain foods broke down in my mouth that they tasted sweet like celery. And the green juice that I drank in the morning on day two, which was the same one I drank on day one, which didn't taste so good on day one, tasted sweet on day two. Once I started to chew through the pulp, I could taste the sugars in my mouth uh, as the carbs were breaking down. I also noticed that I had increased confidence because I was able to get through um, the first few days, which were quite difficult uh, in terms of my self-control. And I've always had very good discipline, so that hasn't been an issue. But with sugar recently, I felt like I've been almost enslaved by it. So not having to uh, grab sugary treats, not having to rely so much on processed foods and um, ready-made foods was really, really a confidence booster. Um, the third thing that I noticed was that I had a lot more energy. I usually have oatmeal, steel cut oats, or uh, a smoothie bowl for breakfast. And, and sometimes I actually feel like I could use another nap after breakfast, even though uh, I eat breakfast within an hour or two of waking up. However, when I started my day with the lemon water and then went on to the green smoothie, which consisted of spinach, celery, uh, different greens and uh, coconut water, I felt really, really energized and really recharged. I didn't notice it so much on the first day, but the second day I really, really noticed it because I felt like I could run a marathon. Another thing that I noticed is that I felt a lot less bloated. So sometimes after I eat, I feel like my waist has gone up like a couple of sizes and I didn't feel bloated at all. In fact, my stomach felt flatter than it had in a long time. And it stayed that way even after I would eat meals. I noticed a little bit of bloat after I ate um, pasta on day five and it was spelt pasta. Uh, I usually eat that with tomato sauce and a whole bunch of starch, starchy veggies, but I just ate it with broccoli uh, and rapini and some other greens. And I felt like I was a little bloated, but not as bloated as usual. And so I feel like those were really, really good reasons for me to want to continue with the, the cleanse as hard as it was. What's wrong, baby? Now on to the cons. Uh, so the first major drawback that I noticed was that on the first couple of days I felt, or the first day, I felt really, really low on energy to the point where I couldn't even get off the couch to go work out. And I think a part of the reason for this is because I didn't consume enough calories. I, I had planned what we were going to eat um, and I just didn't anticipate that it was not going to be enough to satiate my hunger. So I felt hungry right after I would finish the meals that I had been planned, which required that I scrambled around last minute uh, to figure out some new recipes and foods uh, to prepare with what we had on hand. It actually turned out really good because I was able to come across some recipes um, that I'm definitely going to incorporate into my lifestyle after this cleanse is over like the chickpea pancakes uh, that I shared on my Instagram story. But yeah, it was really difficult. I ate a few extra spoons of, uh, of nut butter just to try to get my calories in, but I'm sure I didn't hit um, the 1800 calorie mark, which is Mama. the minimum that a woman that's nursing needs to consume. Mama. So uh, that's another part of the reason Mama. that I did, yes, baby. So much research on how to go about cleanse sugar cleansing because I am nursing and being a vegan means that I'm already very limited on what I'm able to eat. 
um it also meant that it was really difficult this during this detox it was also really really difficult to grab foods and go um almost had to prepare every single meal and well in advance so that I was able to remain on track. Um, there aren't many foods out there that are healthy, that are vegan, and that are sugar-free. Um, found a lot of keto stuff, but not necessarily the healthiest stuff in terms of very processed. So um, if I didn't prepare my meals in advance, I wasn't able to get out of the house because there wouldn't be much, oh, there wouldn't be much that I would be able to consume uh, while I was out and about. This brings me to another con, which is that I got kind of bored of eating the same foods over and over again. I must have eaten chickpea pancakes like three times the second day. We didn't have a lot of groceries on hand, so that was one of the reasons, but I really didn't know what else I could eat. So what we had planned, like I said, wasn't um, filling. And so this required me to make some new foods. I basically had to figure out um, some new recipes, which I was able to do. Uh, but in the moment, it was really, really difficult because there was nothing left to eat. We'd eat chickpea salad and we would make very different variations of it. But still, it was the chickpea salad. It was uh, chickpea pancakes. It was a whole bunch of repetitive food. So it got a little bit boring. But for week two, I have found a whole bunch of new recipes. So I'm psyched to try those out. I noticed just on one day um, that there were significant impacts of being, I think, at least on this sugar cleanse on my mood. So on day two, although I felt I had more energy than I did on day one, um, because I did eat a little bit more that day and I think I got my calories in, I felt like my mood was really just sort of monotone. Like I didn't feel um, I could sense emotions as well. I felt kind of just like present but not really there uh, when I spoke to my naturopath he said that that's pretty normal when our body is detoxing um, it impacts our mood it impacts our energy levels it can even cause some people to break out which I haven't done yet thankfully but there can be lots of impacts of detoxing I didn't have any cravings on the first day but the cravings got pretty bad after day two and day three. I would spend almost all day thinking about what I was going to eat next. And it got to a point where all I could think about was wanting to eat like a banana or a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And would have fantasies of consuming copious amounts of chocolate and ice cream. And uh, didn't actually do that. Didn't cheat at all uh, during the first week, which was very impressive. And like I said, was a huge confidence booster, but was thinking a lot about chocolate, dark chocolate and coffee, because those are two of my favorite things. Mm. Although I'm not in this process to try to lose weight or um, although that wouldn't hurt because I'm still trying to shed the pregnancy pounds, I did notice that I lost about a pound and a half. was just doing the same exercises that I regularly do um, which is uh, you know four to five days a week of strength training yoga and aerobics so I was doing the same exercises uh, just eating different and still eating the same amount of calories but I feel like the food that I was eating was a lot more natural and whole and so that's my update uh, from week one I will continue to share what I am eating and what's going on with me uh, during the sugar cleanse on my Instagram stories uh, but I'll make a video for week two and let's see how that goes um, the next three weeks I will be documenting this journey and I hope that you will continue to follow with me for those of you who have completed a sugar cleanse, please feel free to share any recipes um, for sugar-free uh, and vegan uh, recipes. I am always looking for new things to make. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share. And if you like videos like this and would like to see more, please subscribe to my channel and make sure to turn on the alert button so that you can be notified when I post new videos. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. Say bye. Bye. Uh.